All right, it's rolling. Um, this is uh, Leon from Mithras. We're just talking a little bit about what's going on with our new album on Strange Loops. And uh, this is Rainer, obviously. Hi. Basically, we figured we'd do a bit of video in and get a studio diary of sorts going so everyone can see where we're actually at and they've actually done something on a new album and that we're not just pretending that we've got a new album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and go through with the process that we've been through as well. Yeah. The album and why we did things this way or that way and yeah. You know, the hazard to have had and so on. On Behind the Shadows, done in a quite a different way, wasn't it? I mean, I downloaded up all the tracks completely on my own with a computer, more or less. Yeah, yeah. And drum machine, blah de blah And then we all got together and practiced the, the rough arrangements I'd done, and, but at that point the songs were already pretty much set in stone, set. weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whereas this time we've built it a lot more together. Really. Yeah. It's been a different type of journey for, for us, I think, hasn't it, really? Definitely um, different to all the other albums. Yeah, yeah. And better for it as well. Like, more enjoyable. You know, that's part of the problem in terms of we've enjoyed making the album so much we haven't been in a rush to finish the fucker. Yeah, yeah. There's an element of that, I think. Yeah. We're just sitting here in my studio, which is where we record everything. It's not the uh, biggest room in the world, but I've um, got all the gear we need. Hang on a minute, let me just load that up again. The beauty of this video is we can cut all this shite out, so just cut it Or leave it in. When Rain was out of the band on his hiatus, I came up with quite a few ideas that basically turned into the Time Never Last CP, but it was never, there was never anything really more than that. There were a few riffs here and there, ideas here and there, and riffs that I've been knocking around for ages like any band has, I suppose. Well, some of the riffs I learned before I left. Yeah, there were a few bits, weren't there? Like, a couple um, of good ones. A couple of good riffs. <laughs> like the bit from um, Scylla and Tribdis that turned into, um, that was a song we had from ages back, and we also had, I suppose the riffs from Time Never Last as well. Yeah, because I remember learning yeah, some yeah. of them. That was quite an, quite an important one we were doing. But yeah, most of, the, most of the stuff has sort of come together since Rainer rejoined the band, which is quite a long time ago now. It's like, was it 2011? Or, I just oh, can't remember. remember now. I'm getting so old and stupid, I can't remember my own birthday. <laughs> probably, Choose to forget you, Probably for the best. <laughs> we've just been plodding away at the album. I mean, every week we've been getting together and just chop, 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 chopping things yeah. down. And for a couple of years we were more or less practising practicing every week for like five or six hours, just playing the songs relentlessly. I was probably drumming, Rain would be singing and playing bass. Yeah, and that took up a lot of time, A lot of really. time, playing long to get recorded to guitar, guitar tracks with, with a click, just tweaking the arrangements, tweaking, tweaking the drum parts, really. I mean, it just took ages and ages to tweak the drum parts and get them exactly how we want it. Yeah, definitely. And, and uh, analysing it. Analysing it to the nth degree. Yeah, yeah. between us as well, yeah. The problem is, on this album, because we've had three albums, already in the bag. We know exactly what we did on those albums that we liked and what worked and what didn't work, and things we wanted to improve. So this time we had a really clear idea about focusing on the details, like about the drumming, there were certain things on Shadows that I wasn't quite happy with, certain things about the sound of the drumming that I didn't quite like, and you know, performance, little performance problems. So basically that's what two or three years of rehearsal was all about, just playing until we could play exactly, how, exactly what we had in our heads, really. Yeah, and to be fair, we did a similar thing with Worlds. It's been you were playing Worlds for a long time. Yeah, we probably, I suppose we've, I suppose we've done about the same amount of rehearsal on this as we've done on Worlds now because yeah. Worlds we used to practice twice a week for seven or eight hours at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously now we're old, and it's not as easy to spend all that time just doing blast beats or whatever. But yeah, you'd hope we were better. Now. Yeah, we are a bit better now. Not a lot. That's more or less why it's taken so long to come together, I guess. It was more about refining where we were going to go with it. Yeah, and the detail of the music as well. Yeah, it was working so out... So many little things get added. Working out all those little touches which take an album from being like 80% to 99% or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously it can never be rendered because there's always something that you look back and think, oh, if only I'd have hit that ride symbol a little bit differently that time. And then on top of why it's taken so long, go through the gear that we went through. Yeah. So I mean, that's before we even start recording it. On 
on behind the shadows like Magnus we had a what's the best way of putting it it was a bit more sort of Cliff Burton-esque I suppose yeah yeah the bass was sort of walking around a lot and you could hear it you could hear it quite clearly all the time in the parts it wasn't like an overbearing sort of bass tone no but it was there was quite a lot of the fingers wasn't there in it and yeah yeah yeah, yeah like you say and I think we we sort of decided early on that that worked really well for behind the shadows but on this album we wanted to have a sort of different kind of bass tone really didn't we yeah yeah, yeah. which went in hand in hand with the guitars yeah because we changed the guitar sound slightly as well and that led to us going through even the pickups in my bass and taking them out and finding the best yeah we tried combo. we tried loads of different types of pickups didn't we and yeah, we experimented yeah. and because we already knew what after doing Shadows, we already knew exactly what kind of bass strings we wanted to get the best bass tone. Obviously, the bass can't follow what the guitars are doing without turning into a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. To play, and sound-wise, it would be a nightmare as well. Yeah, it would yeah. just be way too much going on. So the bass has got a very sort of carefully delineated role where it's got to hold down the bottom end and have enough detail so it sounds yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, melodically, not it's cloud up the sound. not cloud up the sound, and it's got to be melodically interesting on its own, and it's got to do, you know, lots of other different things as well. Yeah, yeah. And lots of the parts are bass driven on the new album as well, so, you know, it carries a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah, because of it having that solid bass, it gives the guitars the opportunity to. to breathe do a bit what more. They do. And, yeah. yeah. You know, we're not, having to, we're not relying on the bottom end on the guitars as much as we might have been. Yeah. yeah. Not to say that they haven't got a lot of bottom end, because I guess they have, really. probably more so on this album than before. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we went through multiple different distortions on the bass to get the optimal yeah. one. We tried, what, five or six different pedals? Yeah, Boss, Ber Behringer, MXR, we tried everything really, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Everything that was available at the time that had the kind of parameters we wanted. Yeah. How many, how many ride symbols was it we went through? It was like... I don't know. It's 15, no, I know there was 20? there was a point that every week it was... I've got this ride for you to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, there was a period where it would literally be three months of ride cymbals. It was, yeah. And rehearsing with different ride cymbals, playing old songs with them, playing new songs with them, just trying everything. I mean, I suppose in a way we had the luxury that we were able to just buy every single ride cymbal we thought would be any good and then just sell it on eBay, basically, if it didn't turn out to be any good. And generally speaking, we managed to break even, so. We never lost any money, but I we just went through so many different ride symbols, it was unbelievable. I mean, I, I seem to recall at one point that uh, I turned up thinking that the ride situation was fixed, and you said, I've got a new hi hat, and I'm not sure I'm happy with the ride. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad way. <laughs> a lot of people hear the new album and they'll listen to it and think, oh, well, it hasn't really made that much difference, but it's not just about, it's not just about how it comes out of the album, it's what it's like to play, and, you know, it's about enjoying the sound of the instrument as well, so. And not only that, you know, like we've said before, we're creating music so that we can also listen to it, and anything like that that's going to be annoying to us, it's, you know, yeah. we don't pay attention to the detail, what's the point of doing it? Yeah, it's all about the details, that's for sure. On the last album, Behind the Shadows, I had a lot of problems with the sound of the high out on that album in the end. I wasn't, I wasn't ever that happy with it. So this time we wanted to really dial it in, and luckily, um, Lee Duquesne, who produced Shadows, he drums now. Uh, in a couple of bands, I said Sharpie and Byron, and he sent me a set of hi hats that he wasn't getting on with, but that he thought might be good. And we literally just put them on the kit. And after trying like every model of brand new saving hi hats that you can get, you know, all the fusion, the AAX, everything, yeah, we got, this, never. got this old beaten up set of hi hats straight away. We're like, aha, yeah, yeah. perfect. Good judgment on his part and look on our part, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we did loads and loads and loads of recording tests of the drums, of the cymbals, and obviously with the bass and the bass pickups and the bass distortions we did the same thing. Like Behind the Shadows, um, On Strange Loops is being recorded completely in our own studio, which is, as we said, a blessing in a lot of ways. Obviously it's a curse in another way in that when you've got such an uh, obsessive attention to detail, we do end up taking a long time over things and focusing on all those small details where if you were basically on a metre all the time, you'd, have to say no, that's you'd have to, you'd yeah. have to stop. You'd be forced. But as Rain has said already, you know, we we do the band to please ourselves and it isn't our job. It's really frustrating for people who have been waiting for this album for ages and they're just wondering if we're sitting on our hands or messing about. But we're not. We're trying to make the album as good as we can. And uh, whilst we mess about. While we mess about. <laughs>
there's a lot of pressure coming from ourselves to make the album as good as possible. I don't feel particularly under pressure from anybody other than myself, really, or from Rainer. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think the pressure, the pressure is that we want to make an album that we think we're is happy great. with. Yeah. And then if other people like it, then fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, not to say that I don't care if people hate the album. I will care. It'll be sad that people don't like it. But it won't affect my enjoyment of the album. Everything's not everyone's cup of tea either. Considering that when we put Shadows out, a lot of people listen to Shadows, and some people really, really like Shadows, people who, who weren't so much into Worlds, but a lot of people listen to Shadows and said, oh, well, it hasn't got a lot of the aspects that I really liked about Worlds. So for us, we've never wanted to be the kind of band who just releases the same album over and over again. And to be fair, I've had people say that about Legions. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, there's a big mix, I think. A lot of people really liked Legions. They thought it was fantastic. And then we did Worlds, and they were like, ah, what are you doing? You know, your style was great on Legions. Why are you changing it now? Why is it all weird and spacey, you know? So I suppose that's, I suppose it's cool in a way that there's, each of the albums has got its own sort of thing, and people can get into that. I mean, you know, Legions is quite barbaric and raw, and it's got high energy, and it's really fast. And then you've got Worlds, which is just a totally different thing. It's weird, it's off the deep end. Um, there's lots more ambience, the production's totally different. And then you've got Shadows, which is more of a sort of bulldozer. It's straight yeah. to the point, hammering. It's more sort of metal album, which is what we really wanted to do at the it's time. It's crazy. It's got its own crazy bits, yeah. And the songs on, on Shadows, they're more concise and yeah, you know, yeah. a bit more sort of, it's a bit snappy. It's a snappier album. Evolve, don't revolve. Yeah. As they say. I mean, I'm not trying to say for a minute that the differences between our albums are light years because they're not really, you know, we're not so varied that you're listening to an album thinking, oh, it's a totally different band. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's still yeah, like a thread of continuity to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, I like that. Obviously, otherwise we wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah.